The story began at a gathering of a cult, where they chanted in unison. They continued chanting along with many monsters, and it seemed that the glowing crystal was what they were worshipping. While the ritual was taking place, suddenly a swing of a sword flew towards one of the monsters. Because of this, the cult was startled, and the person who sent the sword swing continued to attack. The man shouted that he would make a way for his troops. This man was introduced to us as the sword master, Ray Chong. With him was a cool old man riding on a skeleton mount, carrying a skeleton army. He is known as Greykeeper George Vilmer. On the other side of the place, a beautiful waifu appeared and shouted that they needed to stop the descent ritual. This waifu's name is Saint Maria Jaeger. As the troops charged, suddenly a voice with a terrifying tone said, it's too late. The glowing crystal cracked and soon after, it shattered. Suddenly it was announced that the tier of the tower had been adjusted from 12 to 12 hard. A powerful monster appeared and blew some soldiers away. Another announcement was made that the objective of the tower had been updated. The faces of the soldiers showed fear after seeing this creature. It turns out that this creature is the fifth season boss. He is the Elder of Plague. Using a swing of his daggers, the Elder of Plague managed to knock down many soldiers. Their objective now was to defeat the Elder of Plague. Using his powerful powers, the Elder of Plague defeated a great number of soldiers. Maria, on the other hand, was trying to protect some of her troops using her giant shield and defensive magic, but the Elder of Plague's overpowering strength was evident. Swordmaster Ray was being protected by his troops from the enemy's strong tentacles. However, in fear, Ray shouted that he didn't want to die yet, and he quickly fled from the battle, leaving his troops carelessly as if they were disposable items. Nevertheless, the Elder of Plague noticed him and immediately restrained him. Where do you think you're going, weak creature? Said the Elder of Plague while attacking. The boss sent a powerful sword slash that hit many soldiers. Just when it was about to hit Sword Master Ray, a man in black and blue uniform suddenly appeared and easily stopped the boss's attack. The soldiers shouted that they were saved. They recognized the man as the Hero King. Using his speed, the Hero King charged towards the Elder of Plague. The boss attacked to stop this hero, but the hero easily stopped his attack again. The Elder of Plague smiled with excitement because he found a strong opponent. The boss also charged and they clashed with their extraordinary strengths. The collision caused a huge explosion, and the place was enveloped in green light. Waifu Maria shouted in worry, and it seems that the name of the Hero King was Kong Yusung. While they were clashing, the Elder of Plague commented on the Hero King's courage to face him alone. The hope of humanity, the Hero King, must die and drown in the Sea of Plague. While this green boss was still monologuing about how he would take Kong to a place where no one would see them, the Hero King interrupted him. He spoke and said thank you. He couldn't let people see his full potential. So he was contemplating about that. Suddenly, the Hero King released an overwhelming strength that surprised the Elder of Plagues. He was gradually enveloped by Kang's power, and all he could say was, this can't be. The place was enveloped in blue light because of Kang's powerful attack. After the smoke cleared, the witnesses of the battle were in disbelief. Some soldiers there were stunned, and before long, they shouted in joy because they won. Here, the Hero King was shown with a glowing object in front of him. People cheered and suddenly an announcement was made that Season 5, Descent of the Elder of Plague, had ended. Several notifications appeared, such as a random equipment ticket being given to players who showed impressive performances. A rare or higher tier skill card ticket was given to the top 100 players. A hero or higher tier artifact pull ticket was given to the top 10 players. And for player Kong Yusung, who defeated the season boss, the Elder of Plague, the mythical equipment Black Death and the title Elder Slayer were given. Suddenly, Kong collapsed, worrying the other people there. Kong thought to himself that because of this, the world could continue for another year, and then he closed his eyes. In the next scene, we go to an interview where they announce the achievements of a person for securing rank 1 in the player ranking for four consecutive seasons. Number 1 in the amount of towers cleared. The level, gear, skill, and achievement points are unrivaled at rank 1. The hero amongst heroes. 
This is none other than the hero king, Kong Yusung. Then, we see a young girl who was overjoyed to see her idol on TV. Some civilians were also shown discussing how Kong saved the world along with some other players from around the world, and there are even people selling his merchandise. The speaker then starts the interview and says that for the heroes gathered in that place, may they ask Kong about what he wants to say. As Kong stands up, he is stopped by Maria. She whispers to him that if he isn't serious about what he's going to say, he should at least say it politely. Maria asks this of him. As Kong stands up, it is explained to us that they are in the UN interview room in Geneva, Switzerland. And now, the top 10 players of this season have gathered. While the host asks Kong to talk about his heroic performances that saved the world, Kong interrupts him and says, What hero? I'm just doing all this for the money. Because of those words, the listeners were stunned. Even Maria was almost soulless in shock. In the end, Kong says that he has been tired of being a hero for a long time. The story continues to explain what happened to the world. One day, the world suddenly turned into a game. It is shown that everyone now has a touch bar, which puzzled them. In cities and streets of various nations across the world, all kinds of large and small towers suddenly generated, covering the sky. People did not understand what was happening at that time. And after a few days, monsters began emerging from those towers. They immediately began killing humans, causing chaos. Without a doubt, everyone believed that the end of the world had come. People had no choice but to run and be afraid during the monster attacks. When a giant orc was about to attack a woman, something suddenly sliced through it. The woman stared in shock, her eyes wide. Even though people believed it was the end of the world, in the midst of that pandemonium, a human arrived to fight these monsters. A man, who looked like the past sword master Ray, saved the tearful woman from the giant orc. These individuals are called players. They are the ones who slay the monsters and protect humanity. Using their fighting skills, they can defeat these monsters. Maria is also shown protecting a father and son with her shield powers. Subsequently, the rules of the new world are shown. The event that happened to the world is called Tower Break. The phenomenon where many monsters came from the towers can be prevented as long as the tower is cleared within the set date. So, the beings called players, who have colorful abilities to clear the towers, are reborn as the heroes of the world, so to speak. In the next scene, we watch Kong watching himself in a live replay on television about what he said that he has long been tired of playing the hero. This was a statement from the Hero King that became controversial. After that, Kong browses the internet for comments on a website. It is explained here that this is the player forum, the international player community that naturally generated in the world turn game. This is the place where all kinds of clearing information is shared and where item trading between players happens. While he is rebuffing the trash talk about him using a dummy account, he wonders why the trolls knew that he, the hero king himself, was commenting. He saw comments saying that if he was reading them, he should post tips for the next season on the forum. There were also people curious about who he really was. There was even a reporter who said they would camp in front of his house until the season opening date. When Kong looked at his balcony, he saw many paparazzi waiting outside his house. He thought to himself that he wouldn't just let this go. Maybe what he was referring to was his fame, but who knows, you figure it out. In the next scene, Kong stepped out of his house, where reporters immediately asked him what he would do in the next season. They also asked what his thoughts were about the worldwide boycott of Hero King merchandise. He also said that he had been done for a long time, at the UN Hall, so why does it still show results in the new season as a player? Kong asked the reporters if they knew what celebrities on TV say after getting drunk and causing problems. The answer was that they would make up for it with good work. The people listening to him were puzzled. Soon, the ground shook, surprising everyone. It felt like they were about to fall from the force of the tremor. A notification appeared, announcing that season six, Endless Labyrinth had begun. The paparazzi and reporters were shocked as a tower generated before them. The notification said players could now check the tower's information at the gate below it before deciding to enter. As the tower's fall approached, the airborne tower would descend to the surface, so they should be careful of its height. 
several towers floating in the sky were shown. The notification urged them to defeat the towers and protect the world from destruction. Kong smiled and immediately sprang into action. People noticed Hero King flyers on the ground and thought that Kong must have spread them on purpose. In the next scene, Kong arrived at the destination of one of the towers. He commented, Wow, look at that, there's no one here. The first day of the season was always quiet, as usual. Another notification appeared, showing that some elders expressed their satisfaction after seeing the contractor of the Elder of Jesters. The contractor referred to here was likely Kong, since he was the only character shown at the moment. The Elder of Steel laughed heartily and bestowed the blessing of Sword Sharpener upon Kong. The Elder of Frost also laughed and gave Kong the blessing of Winterbringer. Kong commented, Sure, just keep laughing. A notification said Kang's swordsmanship aptitude and Frost magic aptitude had significantly increased. Kong explained that he didn't do what he did now and at the UN Hall without reason. He did it to receive rewards from the Transcendance watching the players, the Elders. Because of Kang's exhibition at the UN Hall, he received the blessing from the Elder of Gold and Legend, the Blessing of Legend Puller. This blessing was explained to have the effect of rapidly increasing his luck during three pulls, and within those three, he would receive a legendary reward with a 100% chance. The limit for using it was one time only. Kong smiled and opened all his unreceived rewards. The blessing of Legend Puller influenced Kang's pulse. He was overjoyed to see a legendary card before him. Soon, he pulled a legendary item. It was explained that the item was the black surcoat stitched with a golden cross, golden fanaticism. This was a legendary tier armor. The effects of it give the player plus 999 evasion, plus 300 dexterity, and when equipped, the player can activate the skill shield of Seraph with a 168 hour cooldown. From the unreceived rewards Kong collected, he received a legendary armor and hero tier skill and artifact. Immediately, Kong wore his new legendary armor, making him look more formidable, and then entered the tower. After that, the Elder of Gold and Legends withdrew the blessing of Legend Puller and also blessed Kang's t-shirt sale. In the next scene, Kong was teleported inside the tower. Upon entering, he saw an orc that wanted to kill him. This tower was the Tower of the Blood Moon Orc Tribe. It is a Tier 3 tower with a maximum of 5 floors. Up to 4 players can be in here at once. This tower has no rest floor, but it has a shop where you can buy things. The objective is to eliminate the top floor boss, the Blood Moon Singer. Kong commented that if that was the case, he would test his hero tier skills here. He used his skill Create Frost Blade. This ability allows Kong to have a sword made of ice. He released it, and because of his high frost magic aptitude, it had the additional effect of Frost Breath. Kong charged with his Frost Blade with exceptional speed. With one swing, he was able to bring down many orcs. The orcs tried to stop his attack, but when they were hit, they just turned into ice. The monsters shattered from Kang's frost slashes. All the orcs in this tower turned into ice in Kang's path. As he continued fighting, Kang's level and skills increased. Before long, after basic fighting on the first floor, he cleared it. In the end, Kong commented that his initial fight went well and questioned whether he should save the world again or whatever. The story continued as Kong reached the third floor of the Tower of the Blood Moon Orc Tribe. Kong emerged on a pathway, holding his frost sword. We saw that he seemed tired and weary from his experiences. Upon entering, he saw many orcs celebrating and drinking inside, with a bonfire burning. One of the orcs noticed him and immediately informed its companions of Kang's presence. It shouted that the warrior had arrived, and that he was the warrior who would take them to Valhalla. The orcs raised their weapons, looking at the hero king. They would fight to the death with honor. Kong commented, saying, Hold on, you overeager orcs, you're getting too excited. Kong told them he would show them what heaven looks like right now. The hero king leaped towards the orcs, ready to swing. The orcs waited for him to land and tried to parry his attack. In the next scene, Kong had already defeated the orcs scattered on that floor, and we saw blood splattering everywhere. After that, Kong reached the fourth floor of the tower. Exhaustion was evident on Kang's face, but he just smiled. 
He thought that it was good his level was rising quickly, but it was quite hard to fight continuously without rest force. That's okay, Kong. Such is the life of an RPG player. Suddenly, Kong noticed something that caught his attention. He received a warning that the Warsong bodyguards were blocking the way to the chieftain's room. We saw more orcs, but this time they were armored and had better weapons. Kong thought to himself, you guys are making it too obvious that I'm facing an elite mob right now. Don't you have anything better? The orc's eyes blazed as they glared at the hero king. Suddenly, a notification popped up, saying fight to the death with honor. Kong was surprised and wondered why he received this notification. It turns out the Elder of Steel had blessed the battle of the Warsong bodyguards, the orcs he was facing now. The orcs placed their left hand on their right chest and shouted that they were blessed by the Iron Lord. Valhalla was apparently waiting for them. I don't know what they meant by that. Oh well, let them be. The orcs shouted and charged with burning hearts. As they charged, they yelled out, asking where the warrior who would take them to Valhalla was. For the Elder of Steel, they were to sing the Song of Blood and Iron. The orcs ran quickly towards Kong, surrounded by a red aura. Kong just stared at them, waiting. They really have no plans of giving me a break, do they? Thought Kong. He positioned himself to attack and raised his frost sword. He then swung it powerfully, sending out frost particles towards the orcs. Kong was surprised by what he saw after doing that. His attack had no effect on the orcs, and they just continued charging at him. Luckily, he was able to dodge them. Kong counterattacked, targeting the nape of an orc. As his frost sword hit, he thought to himself that he knew it. His attack didn't deal much damage. It seemed that these monsters had some kind of resistance to frost, as they were the so-called elites. Kong thought about what he could do. He grabbed onto a chandelier after jumping to avoid the charging orcs. He said that he needed to inflict proper, fatal injuries, but since he didn't have a suitable skill for that at the moment, he would use one of his items. The orcs trash-talked him for not coming down from the chandelier, calling him a coward. We then had a flashback of him acquiring some legendary items, and he was amazed because he got maxed out equipment. His hero tier skill, frost sword creation, and even the hero tier artifact he acquired. Soon, Kong opened his inventory to get an item. He took out the hero tier artifact called Frozen Heart. The properties of this artifact were that when worn by the player, it would provide glacier synergy, amplifying the effects of cold attribute skills. It would also increase his cold damage by 14%, as well as his cold resistance. Kong wasn't sure if he could handle the artifact if he used it now. The description of the artifact was explained, stating that it shouldn't be used by a player unfamiliar with frost magic. There was a risk of becoming an ice statue for the user. Before wearing it, the player should be registered with the insurance service from the Red Magic Tower. Some orcs were getting irritated with Kong, so they shouted for him to come down from the chandelier. A dishonorable being would not be able to enter Valhalla, they claimed. One of the orcs threw its giant axe towards Kong. Kong realized that it wasn't the time to hesitate, so he equipped the artifact despite the chance of becoming an ice sculpture. He was notified that he had equipped the Frozen Heart artifact. Kong was then surrounded by an extraordinary aura, as if a blizzard was swirling around him. Kong now feels the powerful essence of frost magic, having obtained glacier synergy. He descended from the chandelier and faced the orcs once again. The effects of Kang's equipped skill cards with frost attributes were amplified. Kong said that just as in which state you were born in this world, it's all about the items. Since his magic power was overflowing, his fatigue disappeared. Kang's frost sword seemed to have upgraded after equipping the frozen heart. The orcs charged again, shouting that the war will resume. An orc's axe hit a block of ice, which turned out to be Kang's body, now covered in ice armor. Kong counterattacked using his new powers, successfully inflicting damage. The orcs turned to ice and fell. Kong leveled up again after defeating an elite. Other orcs charged to retaliate, synchronizing their movements to prevent Kong from dodging. Kang's sword transformed as he held it with his ice hands. Kong now had an ice claymore and ice gauntlets, which he used to parry the consecutive attacks from the orcs. Using his ice gauntlet, he destroyed an orc's weapon, turning it into ice. The orc's puny axe was no match for Kang's impressive ice claymore, and our hero king prepared to attack again. 
Swinging his sword, Kong easily toppled several orcs, and he leveled up again. He changed his gauntlet and claymore into dual swords, reminiscent of sword art online, to make his fight more exciting. Kong duel slashed the faces of several orcs, sending them flying. One even hit the ceiling due to the force of Kang's attack, and Kong leveled up again. He changed his weapon to ice daggers. Kong consecutively eliminated more orcs, leveling up multiple times. He left a trail of ice, instead of blood, on the floor. Soon, Kong cleared the elite floor. As a special reward, he received a random skill card pack and a thousand achievement points. Upon receiving the pack, Kong decided to open it. As usual, being an RNG player, he only got common tier skills. He thought it would be legendary. The skill he obtained was Stab, a common tier skill with a metal attribute. Its ability allows the player to temporarily boost their physical abilities in Stab. Kong commented that it was okay, better to have gotten something than nothing. Afterward, while heading to the next floor, Kong received the blessing from the Sword Sharpener, which drastically increased the effect of the skill card he obtained. In the next scene, he arrived at another room. His attention was caught by a person who welcomed him to the room, and it seemed like they were still alive. Well, the person named King apologized for being alive, and the person in the room told him not to be sorry because they should be alive to sell more items. It turns out this is the storeroom mentioned in the tower's description. In the next scene, the merchant commented that Kong has earned a lot of achievement points and urged him to use them all before he dies. It was explained that this being is store manager Otomida, a creation of the Elder of Machinery. Otomida jokingly suggested that Kong should offer a sacrifice to the spirits instead of dying. Kong opened the item list to shop, where Otomida tried to trick him into buying a card pack to get a legendary item, but it didn't work. In the end, Kong decided to buy an acceleration potion and a flame potion. The total cost of the two potions was 300 achievement points. As he was leaving the storeroom, Otomida tried to trick him again, so Kong covered his ears and said he couldn't hear it anymore. In the next scene, Kong arrived at the boss floor. Kong faced the boss and commented that it looked like it was time for war. After standing up, the boss immediately charged at Kong, shouting to fight to the death with honor. Kong created a protective barrier to block the boss's attack. However, the attack easily shattered his barrier. The boss was so large that Kong commented that the ones he fought before were dwarves, not orcs. Kong threw the flame potion he bought earlier at the boss. The potion hit the boss and caused fire to spread over its body. While being consumed by the fire, something activated in the boss and its eyes lit up. Suddenly, the effect of the potion was gone and the boss went berserk. After its charge, Kong suddenly appeared behind it, wielding an ice lance. Kong descended rapidly from his jump, positioning himself to strike. Kong managed to pierce the boss's chest with his extraordinary attack. Welcome to the Donut Family, Orc Boss. Say hi to Ace and Rengoku for me. Kong commented that thanks to the blessing, even common tier skills can be useful. Aw, oh, it turns out Kong used the normal skill he got, which was stab. The more you know. Suddenly, the boss stood up again and said they weren't done yet. It shouted loudly with the remaining air in its body, activating its berserk skill. When Kong turned around, he just smiled at what he saw. In the end, Kong commented that a game isn't fun if it's too easy. The story continues where after Kong used the stab move on the tower boss Blood Moon Singer, it still didn't die. The boss then activated its berserk skill, which allowed it to go on a rampage after receiving lethal damage. It screamed, causing a powerful shockwave to ripple throughout the area. Kong easily blocked this with his ice shield, but the shield was destroyed, so he commented, this much damage from just a shockwave? My life would definitely be over if I got hit by that. But if I get hit, the boss charged again, and Kong prepared himself. Even with a hole in it, the Blood Moon Singer could still unleash powerful attacks. While blocking with his ice shield, Kong took out his acceleration potion and drank it. After that, he was able to dodge the incredible strength of the orc boss. The acceleration potion enveloped Kong in a turquoise aura, giving him an acceleration buff for two minutes. As Kong dodged the Blood Moon Singer's attacks, he started a countdown as if he was waiting for something to happen.
He kept dodging the boss's attacks with his speed. As his countdown approached its end, Kong put down the potion bottle and allowed the orc boss to come closer. He turned around, smiled at the Blood Moon Singer, and said, Time's up. The boss collapsed, and it seemed like what Kong was counting down was the duration of its berserk skill. After that, Kong received a notification that he had completed the boss floor. He had conquered the Tower of the Blood Moon Orc Tribe. As a reward, he received an elemental skill card pack. As Kong was browsing through his touch bar, he noticed something. He had received a special achievement, First Conqueror. Soon after, the effect of the acceleration potion wore off. Kong commented while looking at his acquired card pack, doesn't it feel ominous that everything went too smoothly? Here, it was explained that Kang's elemental skill card pack allows him to choose a specific element and randomly receive a common or higher skill card. Isn't this the best reward I can get from a tier 3 tower? Kong asked. I don't know, Kong. You're the character there. I'm just the storyteller. Kong decided to choose the frost element, turning the pack blue. The pack sparkled, and Kong received a notification that he had gotten a common tier skill. He got the skill called Ice Bolt. Kong was disappointed with his reward and commented that this is what he expected from a terrible game. Next, Kong entered another tower, the Tower of the Devil Worshipping Imp. This is a tier 3 tower with a minimum number of allowed players being 1, and the maximum is 16. Standing tall, Kong charged at the annoying imps, yelling that here they are again, those disgusting cultist bastards. He said to kill the heathens. As the imps charged, Kong created ice and prepared to attack. He used Ice Bolt and sent it towards the imps. Sharp ice from the Hero King sprayed onto the imps. Kong continued to use his newly acquired skill on the tower's mobs. While doing this, he said how much he enjoys leveling up skills. Here, it was explained that Ice Bolt has the elements of frost and metal, and its ability concentrates frost within the atmosphere and then throws it in the form of a projectile. Its Glacier Synergy reinforcement effect increases the damage and also the number of projectiles. As Kong continuously used this skill, the level of Ice Bolt increased. Then, Kong received a notification that Wave 2 of monsters would start. The imps in this wave had cleavers, and they screamed for the Demon King to take them to hell. Kong sighed at the sight and prepared himself, telling them to just wait as he will be the one to take them to hell. When Kong attacked, the imps froze easily. After that attack, Kong leveled up again. He used his frost sword and also showered the imps with ice bolt. Because of that, they leveled up. Suddenly, someone shouted, disgusting heathen from one side. Kong turned around, and his face became serious. A notification popped up, showing that the tower boss, Imperatic, had appeared. The boss said that they would honor the Demon King with Kang's blood. The boss then ordered its minions to quickly take down the Hero King. However, before it could finish speaking, Kong had already wiped out its minions. The heretic was shocked at how fast everything happened, and as it turned its back, Kong sent a slash. When the imp turned around, it couldn't react in time, and a notification popped up saying that the frost status effect freeze had been applied to it. Confidently, Kong approached the boss and said that its arrival was perfect because he wanted to try something. Because of the glacier synergy reinforcement effect, the number and types of weapons Kong could create had increased. For instance, the maximum number of frost weapons he could create at his current level had increased. He formed several ice shards and shaped them into javelins. Soon, Kong seemed like a weapons master as he created a multitude of javelins. After that, he prepared to throw them with force. The Hero King posed to make his throw stronger. Because the imp was frozen, it couldn't react to Kang's flying javelins. The boss was showered with javelins, and all of them pierced its body. Still not satisfied, Kang created numerous swords and simultaneously stabbed the imp heretic, resulting in a bright attack. After that, a notification popped up that the Hero King had defeated the imp heretic. Another notification showed up, saying that Kong had cleared the tower of the devil worshipping imp. He received a random equipment pull ticket as a reward for conquering the tower. Kong immediately opened his pull ticket and got a silver play mail. However, he said it was useless to him since he already had legendary armor. Kong thought for a moment and noticed that the frost blade didn't weaken even after he split it into multiple pieces. 
As of now, he doesn't feel anything when he released eight of those simultaneously. While analyzing his skill, he suddenly heard something from behind him. A notification popped up saying, Greet your shadow. One of the tower's factions has shown a deep interest in Kang's performance. Kong thought, Already? A notification of a special event called Contact from the factions appeared. It explained that there are various factions intertwined within the world of towers, with organizations under the leadership of elders. They wish to join forces with players to develop their factions. A player can be affiliated with a specific faction within the tower world. Upon completing quests given by the factions, they will receive better rewards. Kong encountered the faction called Shadow Council. A notification explained that many aspects of the Shadow Council are veiled. This is an opportunity to share secrets with them. As their affinity with the following faction increases, players will attain their mysterious powers and darkness, and their existence will be protected under their veil. Kong was asked if he wanted to join the faction of the Shadow Council. Members of the faction surrounded Kong and told him they remembered him. Did he want to meet his shadow again and join their whispers? In Kang's mind, he thought that the Shadow Council wasn't bad since he had joined it in the fifth season. Kong played hard to get, saying he wanted to join, but aren't there many factions trying to devour them? The Shadow Council replied that their veil would protect Kong, and did he forget their power? Kong only said that because he knew their powers well. So, the Shadow Council asked what Kong desired. Kong thought that it's hard to get what he wants with words alone, and he grinned. He told them he wanted a Shadow Beast, and if they would give him that, they might as well add a rare Darkness Element skill card. The Shadow Council was taken aback by his deal. They told him not to overestimate his existence. As they scolded Kong, he commented, Okay, thanks anyway. He left, saying there's no joy in working with them, and they should never meet again. He had done so much for them, and they couldn't even give him what he wanted. But soon, the Shadow Council called him back, and it seemed he got what he planned. The Shadow Council released a Shadow Beast, which looked like a cat. It immediately went to Kong, and he turned to look at it. A notification appeared saying Kong got a Shadow Beast. He also received the special achievement, picking up a cat. This gave him 100,000 achievement points. Kong played with his new Shadow Beast, which enjoyed the play. Along with the Shadow Beast, the Shadow Council gave him a rare skill card, Shadow Blade. They asked if that was enough for Kong to join them. Kong said, nice, to what he got. Soon after, Kong accepted their invitation and joined the faction of Shadow Council, increasing his affinity with them. In the next scene, he was outside the tower, thinking that the season seemed to be going well. Should he continue while things are good, or should he stop now and adjust? While talking to himself, someone called out to him. He turned to look. Finally, Kong sighed and said, here we go again. The story continues with Kang being bombarded by reporters after he completed the Tower of the Devil Worshipping Imp. They asked him about defeating two Tier 3 towers in the same day, and if he could provide a statement. In his mind, Kong was irritated because he was being blinded by the flash of the cameras. Kong answered that he was able to do it because he is skilled. Another reporter mentioned that the Sword Master of China had already defeated a Tier 4 tower. The race this season seemed exciting even though it had just begun. Kong asked the reporter how many entered the tower with the Swordmaster. Apparently, five veterans from the Chinese Communist Party Guild were led by the Swordmaster. However, four of those players died during the attack. Kong commented, Wow, that Swordmaster is really something. It should be called the Shieldmaster since he always uses a meat shield. Who even said he was a Swordmaster? A reporter asked if Kong was implying that the Sword Master expected those sacrifices. Kang's attention was then caught when he heard a reporter shout that the Sword Master had just entered a Tier 5 tower. Kong asked how many were with him this time, to which the reporter responded that he had entered alone. It seemed that the Sword Master was full of vigor from day one. Kong thought that there was no point in rushing the race at the start of the season. Everyone knew that Saint was still collecting skills and items, and Gravekeeper did not seem to be participating in the game at the moment. It looked like the Sword Master planned to hoard items from the Tier 4 towers. When the reporters asked Kong for his thoughts on the situation, they were met with multiple cameras and mics in their faces as they waited for his answer. 
Eventually, Kong said that the sword master was crazy. The reporters were taken aback, asking if that meant Kong wouldn't be participating in the race with the sword master. Kong asked, didn't you all know that already? I'm crazy too, to be honest. So whether it's being a crazy winner or a crazy loser, don't I have to try to be the winner? The reporters advised Kong to be careful with his words. Kong then asked the reporters if any of them could help him get to the Tier 5 tower. In the next scene, Kong stepped into a teleportation circle, and a notification appeared that read, There is only one thing that holds the glory of victory. As Kong stepped onto the teleportation circle, his touch bar appeared. It stated that under the supervision of the Elder of Jesters, each of the Elders had started to place bets. Multiple Elders were scrambling to bet on Kong. The Elder of Frost also bet on him, leaving a note hoping that Kong wouldn't disappoint her. Kong arrived at the Tier 5 Tower of War, which had a battlefield-type format. A historical fortress siege battle awaited Kong. The minimum number of players allowed was one, and the maximum was two. There were no stores in the tower. Kong smiled, thinking that they had already reached beyond the realm of a battle of pride. A note stated that players could not be in the same faction, and there was already one player in the tower. Their objective was to achieve victory for their chosen faction. In Kang's mind, he thought, of course, the player inside now is none other than the Swordmaster. Before long, he decided to start playing and pressed enter tower. In the next scene, as he entered the Tower of War, he was greeted with an explanation. He would be taken to Continental Year 000. Cavalis, the evil empire, had started a war of conquest. It advanced to the edge and reached the front of Palace Fortress within the Kingdom of Rodia. The outcome of this historical battle, the Siege of Palace, was in Kang's hands. Here, Kong was given the choice to join the Cavalis Empire or the Rodia Kingdom. Kong said, OMG, after seeing the two teams. The communists were fighting for imperialism. What would happen if he reported this? Well, I don't know. I'm not in your world. On the Cavalli's empire side, it was not selectable because a player had already chosen it, leaving Kong with the only option of the Rodia Kingdom. Kong immediately chose the remaining option, saying that even if he had been the first to choose, he would have chosen the kingdom anyway. Apparently, in this game, the disadvantaged side gets better rewards. After choosing the Rodia Kingdom, Kong was teleported to Paulus. While teleporting, some knights having a meeting were shown. They shouted that a player had arrived. They were pleased and said that Lord was watching over them. The visitor had arrived to save them. Kong wondered if he was in a strategy planning room. Looking at the people's clothes, it seemed like the battle was just down the street. He asked if he could sit, and the knights agreed. Kong asked who was in charge. The knights' faces fell after he asked that. Kong was puzzled and just looked. Another knight entered, calling Kong insolent. The knight looked like a spoiled brat. Couldn't Kong uphold the royal laws in front of Lord Muta Dusham, the commander of the place, the twelfth generation head of the royal family of Rodia, and the head of the Marquis de Dusham? You know a lot for someone who looks like they've been dusted with baby powder until they grew up. While the spoiled brat was still speaking, Kong cut him off and asked, Hey chief, do you think we can win this battle? Muta arrogantly said that even though they were lacking in terms of resource power, their mental strength was endless. The generals of the Rodia Kingdom had the limitless mental strength of a hundred soldiers. Kong was irritated by Muta's nonsense answer. In his irritation, Kang punched Muta in the body while he was still speaking. From now on, Kong was the chief of the place. The knights were pleased with what Kong did to their former chief. Who would want a spoiled brat as a leader? Kong said they needed to have a meeting and asked about their defense troops, soldiers, and the number of people in the empire. In the next scene, Kong explained that they had 5,000 conscripted infantry from the surf, and out of those, 900 knew how to use a bow. Their numbers were nothing compared to the great military presence of the empire. The only lucky thing about this unfortunate situation was that there were no wizards or magic in this world. And that sword master was not just an ordinary player who used brute force. He was an apostle of the Elder of Steel. Usually, an average player could only have a contract with one elder. With that in mind, there was only one elder that could give rewards. In Kang's case, where he was rewarded by various elders, it was special. 
the Elder of Jesters had made him that one player. Conversely, an Elder could have multiple players, but there was one special player who held the title of Apostle and was favored by the Elder. The Elder didn't hesitate to help the Apostle, but there were restrictions, of course. In the case of Swordmaster, skills not related to the Elder of Steel could not be used as the main attack. Kong smiled and thought that the battle might not be too bad for them after all. But the pressure the soldiers would feel would be different. It wasn't clear to what extent the tower was real. Whether these people were really alive or were just virtual beings that existed in the tower. It was impossible to figure this out. But either way, Kong said that there's nothing more they can do about it. After that, he thought about how he could boost the morale of his soldiers. In the next scene, Kong decided to show himself to the knights, and one of them announced this. The knight informed them that their former leader, Muta, had been dismissed from his position as commander, and the player, which is Kong, would lead them. The soldiers were thrilled to hear that the spoiled brat was no longer in charge, and that someone else would be leading them. Because of Kang's overpowering of Muta, the soldiers' morale skyrocketed. One of the soldiers even wanted to trash talk their former leader, but realized that it was not allowed in the content, and they might get demonetized, so he decided against it. Kong just said, Ah, oh, nice. He worried for nothing. Kong heard a noise behind him, so he turned around. A soldier yelled that the Empire had begun attacking. The kingdom tried to defend against the Empire's attack while they kept charging. One of the staff told Kong that the offense of the Imperial Army was fierce because they were just in front of the fortress gate. If they could overpower them, they could stop their momentum. Kong understood and immediately released his Shadow Beast. When he called it, he found its name too long, so he named it Blackie. Well, how unique, right? How many days did Kong think about that? Blackie appeared, looking very formidable. Kong sent Blackie to show him its skills. The Empire's soldiers were shocked to see a huge black thing on the castle wall. It must have been an illusion, one of them said, but while he was talking, he suddenly felt something. Then, Blackie came out and immediately started attacking them with its dark powers. The story continued with the Empire's soldiers running away from the Shadow Beast released by Kong, named Blackie. While one of them was shouting to forget about the castle wall, a light suddenly appeared behind them. Before long, they were frozen and couldn't react to what was happening. With just one eye spell, Kong easily took down a multitude of enemies. It seems like Blackie was hungry, so Kong invited it to eat, and it immediately pounced on the gathered Empire Knights. Fear was evident on their faces as Blackie approached them. Before long, the blood of the Empire Knights was scattered after they were devoured by Kang's raging cat. In another part of the battle, both sides continued to clash. Kong was on the castle walls, and with his long-range attacks, he was lending a helping hand. He was just picking off the Empire soldiers. While this was happening, he noticed something. The Sword Master was missing from the battle. It was explained that the presence of a player is a double-edged sword. The morale of their allies will increase, but at the same time, it exposes their own location to the enemy player. But of course, it wouldn't be a battle if no lives were at stake. Like other games, there are rules in the tower. If a player loses to another player inside the tower, they will just be expelled from the tower and their attack will be considered a failure. Inside the tower, a player cannot kill another player, but it is possible for the tower to kill a player. In Kang's mind, he was saying that he won't die inside this tower, but that doesn't mean he's okay with losing. This is when Kang's planned strategy was realized. His allies' morale was increasing, however. Next, it showed Blackie slaughtering the remaining Empire Knights in the vicinity. In the next scene, after the long battle, it showed the outcome of this battle, where more from the Empire fell. Where is the Swordmaster? Kong wondered. It's time for him to show up. Is he really going to appear only after all his troops are dead? Suddenly, the Swords of the Dead started to move, and they began to float one by one. This surprised the Knights of the Kingdom. The swords flew in the air, but they avoided the soldiers and headed straight towards Kong. Kong realized that the Sword Master was behind this. He wondered where Rei had acquired this hero tier skill. Kong smiled at what he saw, thinking whether the Sword Master was just lucky or if the Elder of Steel had bestowed the skill upon him. 
Kong successfully avoided the flying swords. While dodging, Kong realized that the reason the sword master was hiding was because Rei was preparing all of this. Kong grinned and commented that he too had prepared something for him. As the multitude of swords approached him, Kong poised himself. He released shadow tentacles to parry all the swords, and he successfully did so. It was too late because his leveling up was already complete. It turns out that the skill he used earlier was Shadow Blade, a rare tier, darkness assassination skill that has the ability to create a blade of darkness from the player's shadow. The Empire soldiers shouted that Rey was there for them, the Kavali's Empire. The visitor was fighting for the Empire. Kong commented that as expected, Rey was targeting him. He said that the tide of the battle had changed. Kong released his frost sword and told the sword master not to think that he could be defeated that easily. He said that the level of sophistication of sword manipulation is inversely proportional to the number of swords. Kong released an ice vortex to stop Rei's sword manipulation. He managed to free some of the swords. However, many swords were still under Rei's control, and they surrounded him. Kong head-on tried to parry the flying swords with his frost sword. While trash-talking Rei's attack, a light suddenly appeared behind him. When he turned around, he seemed surprised. But it was a joke because his reaction quickly turned into a grin. A light shield appeared and stopped the Sword Master's sneak attack. The skill of his legendary armor, Shield of Seraph, was activated, and the attack was reflected back to the caster. The Sword Master was shocked by what happened, and he was the one who got hurt from his own attack. Ray was thrown back because of the reflection, while a notification appeared that Kang's Shield of Seraph skill had cooled down. Using his sword manipulation, didn't Ray ever think of taking over the fortress? Kong asked. The Sword Master was irritated by Kang's comment and asked him what he thought would happen if he won this tower. Even if this fortress collapses and all the people in the kingdom die, unless he defeats Kong, the Empire cannot win. So, was Rei aware of that and still chose the Empire? So, is he going to take him down? Kong asked. The Sword Master agreed and explained that a player is a hero, and the goal of a hero is to protect the world. A bully who doesn't understand that purpose is not worthy of being a hero king. Rei was furious and shouted at Kong. Kong said that it was a beautiful speech, but does that mean that the guild members are not part of the world he needs to protect? Rei was speechless and just stared. Soon after, Rei was filled with rage and charged at Kong while declaring that our hero will have a graceful death. While defending against Rei's attack, Kong commented that he would like to live a long life. Why was Rei bothered by that? Rei managed to break Kang's ice shield with his attack. The two stared at each other, and Kong seemed to get serious. While attacking, Rei said that Kang's talent was insufficient. Rei didn't expect a follow-up attack from Blackie. However, Ray still managed to dodge the sneak attack. The elders were watching their fight. Kong surely knew the meaning of losing in that fight. Suddenly, Kong laughed and asked why he would fight, surprising Ray. Kong quickly moved while Ray was still surprised by what he said. Ray realized that Kong was targeting the psychological blind spots of his opponent. When Ray thought Kong was going to charge at him, Kong suddenly went down the castle wall, surprising him. Ray was puzzled and then realized something. He understood the reason behind Kang's attacks and even his presence. It wasn't to encourage the defenders, but to leave the opponent defenseless. Kong quickly went to the enemy's base while Ray was still surprised. In the end, Ray tried to catch up, but Kong had already created a significant gap between them. And that's the end of this video. If you enjoyed this story, don't forget to like and subscribe to stay updated with the upcoming chapters.